Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flannel Channel. I'm Philip, and uh, this is another episode of Curtis Lowe. It's our 1979 Ford F-150 that we're doing a body drop and body swap onto a 2003 Ford Crown Victoria. My sons and I have never done a project like this before, so we're kind of figuring it out as we go, and I'm giving you weekly updates on how this is going. So if you're new to the channel, if you're new to this project, I suggest maybe you go back and you can start at the very beginning. But in today's episode, we're gonna be doing everything that we possibly can to prepare the Crown Victoria for the 79 cab to come down on top of it. So I'm doing a lot of measuring. We've got our exhaust done, we've got the tune-up done. We've got our wheels back from the machine shop, so those are all on the car now. Suspension work is done, and uh, there's been a lot of prep work. So time for some finally exciting stuff of getting the cab up in the air and dropping it down onto this thing. So it's gonna be a lot of up and down, a lot of cutting, a lot of uh, measuring, things like that, but I'm glad you're here. Stick around, should be a fun episode. Let's get to it. All right, so we got our seat covers back from the upholstery guy, and uh, so we're back to kind of working on our seats a little bit. We're sort of jumping around from little project to little project. And he was able to restitch a couple of spots that had come loose. And then there was uh, a hole that he was able to patch for us in the vinyl. Um, I'm okay with that. You know, it's, it's not perfect, but nothing on this truck is perfect. And the other option would have been if he would have replaced this entire panel and tried to match it as far as color. But I decided that's good enough for, uh, for what we're after on this thing. So, um, we're going to put our uh, seat frames together with the seat tracks uh, tonight. And so step over here, I'll show you kind of what I'm in the middle of doing. Um, we're actually using the stock original Ford bolts uh, that came up through the seat tracks into the Ford seats. And I have metric nuts that I'm welding into the base of the seat right now. And what's actually kind of cool is that they actually go in some of the same spots where our original Dodge nuts were welded in or they were just kind of crimped in there. So um, pretty easy. And in the fronts, I had to drill a couple spots. Um, one hole on this side and I think the other driver's seat has like two spots I had to drill. But um, for the most part, hey, three out of four that bolt up perfectly that's pretty awesome so um, yeah we're just gonna buzz these nuts in uh, quick with the welder and then we can assemble our seats we might do that at home I don't know So uh, back down in the basement workshop uh, area slash laundry room and uh, today we're going to start putting our seats back together that we had originally kind of disassembled with the intention of getting them recovered and changing to a different kind of red color for the cab over. But since we're using this in Curtis Lowe, we thought that was like the perfect color and pattern and it really fits that era. So um, since we had it all apart, we have our um, uh, nuts welded in. I just ran the wire brush over the outside of the surface. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of rust inhibitor just so that it doesn't get terribly rusty on the frame and things like that, uh, even though nobody's ever really going to see this. But uh, we'll get the foam put back on. You can kind of tell where the, uh, the springs used to ride. This is just part of the, the fabric of the foam, you know. So I'll probably trim some of that up so it's not hanging too bad. But, you know, 70s stuff. Uh, we had taken the springs out. These are kind of cool because you don't see that a whole lot. Uh, again, not like I'm an upholstery guy, but it's pretty straightforward and simple how they just hook into the holes, just like that. And, you know, I'll, uh, I'll finish putting them together. Uh, got some hog rings. I just picked these up at my local Fleet Farm supply store, and that's what actually is going to attach. You can see there's a wire down inside that foam there, and that's what our seat cover actually attaches to with hog rings all the way around. 
So if you look down inside the foam here, you'll see that there's actually a steel rod that is down inside molded into that foam. And the seat cover itself has kind of a, a rope channel. I guess, I don't know, there's probably a technical name for it, but it holds that rib down in the center and then you'll fold it over and then use the second one out here to actually wrap around underneath the seat and attach it to the seat frame. So you're attaching here and then wrapping the cover around and stapling the underside. And uh, hog rings, uh, these are the style I pulled out. I obviously bought some that were much bigger, but that's all that they had at the store. So it seems to be working fine when you have the right tool and hog rings, you just sort of get in there and grab the two together, pinch it down as close as you can, and move on to the next one and work your way around, stretching it tight as you go. And now looking from the underside, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, where you stretch it tight, pull it, and then use those hog rings to just kind of pull everything tight. And, you know, I've seen guys use zip ties instead of hog rings before. Whatever you can get to work. And you're just sort of closing up gaps like that. All right. So at this point now, um, again, you're going to want to try and make sure that your seams are where they belong and that your cover isn't twisted or anything like that. Um, I'm kind of spoiled on this one because my old hog rings were actually steel, so they're leaving marks in the vinyl, obviously, but they're also leaving rust marks on the foam, so that tells me exactly where I need to be and how tight, things like that. So, get my new one in place here, grab it there, grab it there, pinch it tight, good to go. And then I'll do two more there and there, and uh, then these things can tie up in this area underneath and this tail gets tucked up underneath where it won't be seen anymore so yeah not bad there we go quick wipe down these seats are definitely not perfect but i think they fit the truck just right and they have just as many stories to tell and battle scars as the rest of the truck so yeah good fit we'll do a final clean once they're installed in the truck and we're buttoning everything up Time for the next one. All right, so we're also gonna spend a little time tonight just figuring out how we're going to make the bezel on the dash look good with uh, the cluster from the Crown Vic. And uh, so I've seen other people do something similar to that and they cut out these two center support bars. And so I think we're gonna do the same thing. And uh, yeah, well, it looks a little bit more intentional that way, I don't know. All right, so I got my Dremel tool. I have the curve style, uh, so I can suspend it from the ceiling up above. And uh, just got one of these kind of bits in there. Just gonna work on smoothing these out a little bit. And, uh, you know, I can use different, uh, less aggressive bits once I get close to it. And, you know, safety first. It's really loud too, so I'll see you guys in a minute. you an idea of what it's going to look like in the truck hopefully and you know yeah there's going to be some gaps in there and things like that but after some gentle filing and stuff like that I wanted it to look intentional it's definitely going to be a weaker spot in the bezel so we'll have to be careful that we don't get too carried away with tightening up those screws but uh, yeah now I can work on getting the cluster for the Crown Vic uh, mocked up in the steel part of the pickup dash. So that's the next step. All right, so you can kind of see the mock-up that I have for how this is gonna end up looking. And uh, so what I'm gonna do then is I've marked on the bezel with a black dot each one of the clips that is gonna have to stay in the steel part of the dash. And then I'm gonna have to cut and trim just a little bit in here. I'm going to make my own brackets that will support the cluster up inside there. So that's what I'm working on now is getting this to fit in the steel part of the dash. 
Hey, so check this out. Sometimes you find something you weren't expecting. And that's exactly what happened here. I had actually taken the battery off and I had flipped a bunch of the wire harness up on top of the engine because we were doing some work on our exhaust and things like that. And I just happened to spot a bunch of wires that had been rubbed through on the fender. So gonna fix those. I don't have the stuff with me here tonight, but I'm gonna go back to the shop. Looks like five wires that got rubbed through and there's some corrosion that enters once you let it inside there. So I'm actually gonna cut it, strip it back a little bit, make sure that we have good, good solid connections, crimp it down, heat shrink it. And uh, this right here was from the crash when the car got in a little front end fender bender. So that's fairly recent. I think it's just one that maybe two that I'll have to fix there, but yeah, nice to find it now. Right, let me give you a quick update on my wheel situation. If you remember from last episode, I have a wheel fitment issue where the bolt pattern matches my car, but because this is off a all wheel drive Taurus, like, I don't know, it's fairly new, like 2013, something like that. Um, the center hub area is not exactly what the Crown Vic hub is. And so my solution is that I dismounted my tires back off. I'm gonna be taking these wheels to a local machine shop and asking them to machine it out to that hub size for me. So that way the wheel stays perfectly centered on the hubs. And uh, I, uh, I just don't wanna run into any problems or issues of the wheel cracking or coming loose or anything like that. So to me, it's worth having the professionals uh, with the bigger machines be able to keep that perfectly centered and to uh, open up that center hub for me. Um, I'm gonna have them maybe air on the side of a little bit too small, and then I'm gonna use one of the cones from the tire balancer or the brake lathe over there in the corner, and I'm gonna use one of those cones and put it in the shop press and actually bend that lip out a little bit because that's where a lot of the strength comes from in these wheels is that lip that bends out. So that's what I'm gonna ask the machine shop to do is to give me a whole, you know, maybe a uh, few thousandths smaller than that hole. And that way I can bend a lip out just a little bit. So that's my plan. So I got some great news this morning. Uh, I've been working on trying to get the Crown Vic finished up, get all the little details and, and things like that finished up before we can set the cab of the pickup down on top of this thing. So trying to finish up the exhaust manifold uh, gasket that was leaking on this thing. And I ran into two uh, studs that broke off. They were giving me a really, really hard time. But I got this text message photo from my buddy Brett this morning. And uh, he was showing me that he got them unstuck for me. He was able to weld the nut on there and extract them because I kept trying and trying and trying, failing and failing, failing. So. Brett, thank you so much. There is uh, six bottles of thank you in the fridge for you. I appreciate your help, man. And uh, Brett is one of those people that I can call when I need an assassin to come in and just know that he's gonna handle it. And yeah, so everybody needs help once in a while. So uh, I'm gonna put this exhaust manifold back on. Gonna raise the car back up and get the rest of the exhaust buttoned up for now. Uh, got some wiring to finish up over here. Got to finish the pinion seal on the back of the car. A couple other details here and there. Get the wheels bolted on and uh, finish doing my trimming um, so that we can uh, move to the next step. I'm going to need the help of my four strong young sons uh, to uh, help me set this cab where it belongs. And then my plan, I don't know if this is going to work, but my plan is to keep the car on the ground, but to use the hoist to go up and down with the cab because I know that it's going to be a lot of test fitting and shaping and trying to get everything lined up just right where we want it before we can start welding. So that's my goal for today is to get all these last minute um, kind of things finished up, get my list whittled down to nothing, and then we can move on with the project. So here we go. i take you underneath here for just a second and show you I got the manifolds on both sides bolted to the engine, uh, new gaskets, new hardware, all that stuff is in. I cut out the secondary, the rear catalytic converters. So the front cats are still on there. Everything's still functional, still has four oxygen sensors in there. But uh, yeah, gonna flow a little bit more. 
mostly for sound that I'm doing that, but yeah. So there they are. And uh, back here, I got the new pinion seal in and kind of cleaned up, sort of, but good enough. Uh, up here, took care of some of the wiring and uh, I think I'm gonna do even a little bit more than this because I'll consider this kind of a temporary fix, but I'm gonna get some actual like copper eyelets for the ends of my battery cables because I really don't want corrosion forming in there. So we'll get those crimped on, but found a whole bunch of bad wires in there. So I'll tape that all up and get that where it belongs. I also had a bad ground up there. I'll show you in a second. So that is my main engine ground right there. And I discovered that that was just barely hanging on by a few strands back in there. So I'm glad I found that. And uh, I've been marking all of our grounds with green tape all the way through. This one is temporary just until we get some more body work put on this thing. I'm just having to add some grounds just to make sure I can start this thing up and everything sounds okay. But yeah, things like this, just trying to right some wrongs while we can before we get the sheet metal in place. So I'm going to hook up a battery, make sure this thing still starts and runs okay. New cert belt is on. Yeah. Awfully happy with that. Let's hear how it sounds. Huh. Okay. So that was one of those moments that sometimes you have to just go through and say, all right, I'm an idiot and I just needed to be reminded of that. So yeah, <laughs> I got done fixing all my broken wires and the stuff that was rubbed through and these problems that I was finding in the wire harness up here. And I got it all buttoned up and put back together and I stuck the battery in and I was gonna hit the key and start this thing up because we just got done doing the exhaust on it. And don't you know, nothing. And I was scratching my head, going over and over all the wires that I had spliced and oh, it's just so frustrated. And then I realized, wait a second, I have two batteries. One is out of the pickup and one is out of the Crown Vic. The Crown Vic battery is good battery. The battery that was in the pickup was a junker. They're both group 65s. I went back, popped my good battery in, boom, fired right up perfectly. So <laughs> yeah, I'm a moron. Let's listen to it now. Fuel pump. Yes. Love it. Still the stock mufflers on this thing for now. Still over the axle for now. Eventually, I think we're going to have it exit right here. And it's going to be a lot louder. But for now, I'm just thankful this thing is still running and doing fine. So, mission accomplished. Woo! Love it. That'll burn off some of the uh, some of the oils and all the stuff that got on the manifolds as we did the work. But yeah, man, good feelings, good feelings. I'm gonna sleep so much better now. And uh, so, final step: do a little bit more trimming up in here, getting ready for our cab to come down on top. <sighs> Love it. So check this out. This is an exhaust system aftermarket from Mustang GT. It's made by MBRP. It's full three inch. It's two and a quarter inlet. And uh, it was given to me by a customer that brought his Mustang into our shop. He didn't love the sound of this system. So he had us put a stainless Borla exhaust system on his Mustang. So anyway, I'm thrilled because if I can make this fit and work on the Crown Vic, 
it's gonna sound amazing. I still wanna try and make it so that it's gonna exit up in front of the rear wheels if possible, but yeah, this is gorgeous. And uh, completely given to me free. Unreal, super excited about this. So it's probably not gonna make this episode uh, because I'm gonna run out of time. There's still a lot to do and I need to focus on getting the cab onto the body. But yeah, at least you guys know this is part of the build now. Woo! It's gonna sound awesome. So this is probably a closer representation of what it will eventually look like underneath the car. I'm gonna have to cut and shorten up this section here. And obviously I'll be cutting the hangers off and I actually flipped these things around and took the tips off, at least for now. But that kinda gets me an idea of where I think the mufflers will ride and some of the bends and the angles and things like that. I think, I think, I don't know. Just, just in the rough stages of mock-up now. Yeah. Just kind of doing uh, some last minute trimming before I get ready to uh, start test fitting the cab on top of this thing, but I know that there's more cutting that I'm gonna have to do on this section here. So what I decided to do since I'm by myself out in the shop tonight, I'm trying to get some good measuring points on the body itself. And so I decided to start using this seam, the pinch weld here. And um, I just mocked up a pry bar so that I could hook the tape measure onto that thing. So it's not exact. You know, I need to add a little bit there. But if I measure from there over to this pinch weld on this side, that's pretty darn close to 61. I mean, you could call that 60 and three quarter, but I also have that little bit of flexibility because it's a pry bar on that end. So if we called that 61, and I know that the body of the truck itself needs to be 64 at the bottom, and 62 at the top, then I should be able to use that seam on both sides, measure out how far I need to make my cut, and then kind of taper up like I need to up towards the top. And that'll kind of give me my idea of how far inboard I need to actually cut some of this stuff. So I think I can go off this pinch weld here and this pinch weld here and take out the section that's necessary in order to get the cowl of the pickup to sit down where it belongs. Now, that is not taking into account the fact that our cowl may be sitting somewhere back in here. I honestly don't know. So that also is part of why we're having to make some of these measurements now and do as much beforehand because it's a lot easier to make cuts later as we're test fitting. So I don't want to take off too much, but I know that we're going to be making lots of little pieces to fill in gaps and things like that as well. But that's what I'm doing right now. Something else interesting that I discovered is from this pinch weld out to here is three and a half inches, okay? And then when I took my tape measure from this pinch weld, out to here, it's three inches. So the car actually is wider by half an inch from that pinch weld. You can see it's shaped a little bit differently as well. So I don't know, could be because they needed extra room for the HVAC, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. Okay, so here's what I decided to do with the wheels on this truck. Um, decided that because we were having issues with our center hole being too small, I took them to a local machine shop and gave them the spacer that has the proper size center hub hole in it. And they were able to just machine that out for me and they did a fantastic job. Let me get it to focus here. They even put a little bit of a chamfer on it and uh, I'm really happy. So let's head over to the other shop, make sure it fits on our hubs of the Crown Vic and we'll mount these tires back up. All right, so you can find out right along with me if these fit and if I need to do any clearancing on my brakes or make you know, spacers or anything like that, see if we have any issues. So let's find out. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, I think that fits awesome. Those guys open up that hole just perfectly. And uh, there is a little bit of a lip. If you see on those five contact points, it's pretty thick and beefy. I'll show you on this wheel. Still have quite a bit of thickness there in those five points. And that's a pretty thick area still. So I don't feel like I've weakened the wheel at all. I asked the guys that were doing the machine work for me and they said, no, nah, we've done this kind of stuff before and uh, shouldn't have any problems with losing any integrity of your wheel. So yeah, I'm happy. Let's put the rest on. Uh-huh, just kind of like I thought, I have a little tiny contact area right there on my caliper bracket. And you can see it's making a little bit of scraping on the back side of my wheel. So two options. Number one is do a little die grinder action. Or number two, put a space around. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Well, I decided to go with the option of grinding and clearancing first, simply for the reason that I know once the sheet metal is on this project, I'm gonna have some clearance issues between the sidewall of my tire and uh, the, uh, the fender. So if I can keep that to a minimum, all right, I'm gonna do that. So I'll start by clearancing around my caliper bracket. If that still doesn't work and I feel like I'm maybe in danger of making things too weak on my brakes or anything like that, then we'll go with spacers, but I know that the spacers are gonna make the problem of tire clearance with my fenders an even bigger problem. So if I can't avoid spacers, I will. So let's get grinding. That wasn't so bad. I didn't uh, want to take off any more than that, but I pretty much just kept trying it. And yep, that's totally normal sound with the, just the rotors now. Awesome. All right, well, if it turns out to be a problem later on, you know, if once the brakes heat up or I hear it going around corners, doing a little rubbing or something like that, I can do the spacer thing later or do more clearancing, whatever. But for now, I'd say we're good. Now I know how much to take off on the other side. We continue on the journey. All right, same thing on this side. Just kind of got it smoothed out a little bit. Time for a quick one of these. And it's on to the next project. Yeah. That's hot riding. Solve the problem, move on. Next thing I'm gonna do is get in here and I'm going to remove all the insulation on the firewall and the floors, the kick panel, things like that because I don't want any fires as I'm gonna start welding on this thing soon. Uh, and you know, once I've finished with all this stuff, and the cab is where I want it, the welding is done. I'm gonna go through, spray some rust inhibitor on it, put some seam sealer in all of my seams and welds, and then put some sound deadener back in once the project is complete. I plan to do carpet, things like that, but for now, the stock stuff has to come off and uh, out it goes. Probably shop back and get some of this, there's leaves in here and stuff from when the car was sitting outside. So, yep, good prep work now means better end result. Off we go. There, I'm happy with that. Looks a lot, uh, a lot more cleaned up and ready to receive a cab. And uh, a lot less likely to have a fire as well. So, yeah, I like it. And we are officially ready for the cab. I. Like I've said many times, I know I'm gonna to have to take more material off here, but I think I wanna get the cab up and start doing some measuring and uh, things like that with the cab on the hoist and the car on the ground. So I'm as far as I can go by myself tonight and I'm gonna rely on my sons to help me tomorrow morning roll this thing out and uh, we'll get set up to start making our cuts and drop the cab down. So I'm excited, but time to go home and get some rest.